Hello, and welcome to Keep Information Systems Simple video on nested if statements. In our document here, we have a grade book, a uh, bunch of students, 102 students, a bunch of grades throughout the entire semester. Uh, at the end here, we've added up how many possible points and then how many points each student earned, and then again using formulas calculated what their percentage is. For this, we want to hide all this data because this data doesn't matter for this video. But what we want to calculate is what is their letter grade? Now, you can manually do this. You can go through and look at your key over here and say anybody who scores above an 89.45 would round up to an 89.5, which would round up to a 90, which is an A. Same thing for B, C, D, and F, 79.45, 69.45, 59.45. And you can go through this and you can manually do this yourself. 84, that's a B. 84, that's a B. 92, that's an A. 95, that's an A. Whoops, I made a mistake. And that's what's going to happen. Is you're going to make mistakes fat fingering these in. And so we can write an if statement that will calculate this and be more accurate for all 100 students. Now, this does take some time and a little bit of attention to detail. But if you do it right, you can do it one time and duplicate this and replicate this over and over again. So let's get started with our nested if statement. And that's what we're going to do here is exactly what you and I would do as a human being. We would say, if this score is greater than this score, then they receive an A. If W3 is not greater than AB2, is it greater than AC2? If not, is it greater than AD2? If not, is it greater than AE2? And so we're going to walk through that progression to see what letter grade we can give. And we're going to give that functionality exactly here to Microsoft Excel. So we'll start with equals if. Checks whether a condition is met and returns one value if true and another value if false. So if the logical test. So if W3 is greater than AB2 comma, what's our value if it's true? Well, our value is whatever's in AB1, right? And so we're saying the letter A. What's our value if it's false? The problem is here, we don't know what the value is if that's false, because it still could be a B, C, D, or F. And so we got to start another if statement. So if that one, if that if statement is false, we run another if statement. So if W3 is greater than AC2, then we receive AC1, which is a B. If that is false, we have to run yet another statement. W, if W3 is greater than AD2, comma, value if that is true, AD1. If that is false, if W3 is greater than AE2, comma, value if that is true is AE1. If that is false, now here we've eliminated all options, A, B, C, D, except for F. So if it's not an A, it's not a B, it's not a C, it's not a D, it has to be an F. If the value has to be our last option, we don't need to run another if statement. We can simply say, We've exhausted other, every other option. It's this option, right? And so if it's not an A, not a B, not a C, not a D, then it's automatically an F. And now we have to close every one of our parentheses. And Microsoft Excel will help us with this. And we can see we've closed all of our parentheses, and it gives us the letter grade of a B. Now, Double click on this, and it fails, right? Shoot, why does this fail? Well, let's go back and look. As we move down, it's moving our cells down. We didn't use our absolute cell reference. We have to go back and say, always compare it to these cells. So the quick and dirty way is go back into our formula, click AB2, and press the F4 key and make it absolute. And then just walk through this and said, everything except for W3, because we want W3 to move down with us, but we don't want 
AB1 or AB2 all the way to AF1 to change. And so I'm going to simply go through and make these absolute cell references. And I've wrote that and I've fixed that formula in my very first cell. And now we're going to push this down to everybody. And that quick, we've calculated the grade for each student in our grade or in our class. And so the nested if statement is when we have several criteria that we have to compare our data to to get us a result. A little bit complicated, but as you can see, I think I just wrote this formula and made this video in five minutes and 40 seconds, which would be faster than going through 100 students. And if this is something you're going to do every week, every month, every semester, every year, learn to write this formula one time and it'll save you hours over the life of uh, your career. Thank you very much.